Oh hey, I still have a lot of time before Ninja Gaiden shows up on my doorstep, so I still technically have some time to play a ninja-related game. And I found one. My eyes are beginning to hurt. Another day without playing Ninja Gaiden, could this get any better? Oh. But hey, we get happier the longer we live, or so I can recall from that one movie. And it's not that long since my hands underwent severe torture, so I have all the free time to do literally anything I want. And what's the first thing I want to do? Anime. They literally have everything you could ask for. Words, breasts, it's a dream come true. And what better way to do anime by playing a video game related to anime and ninjas at the same time? It's practically karma at this point. Katana Zero is a platformer created by a single indie developer named Justin Stander. This game features side-scrolling hack-and-slash gameplay in which you have to kill all enemies in a level without being hit, using your abilities to control time, dodge attacks, and take advantage of the environment. The game began development all the way back in 2013. Throughout the next couple of years, a lot of focus was put into detail and films such as Sin City and John Wick became inspirations for the game's story. Stander alone developed most of the game, although he recruited artists to design the visuals and the soundtrack. The game was published by Devolver Digital for the Mac, the Switch, and Windows on April 18, 2019, Xbox One on October 15, 2020, and for Android and iOS on May 21, 2024. So the game begins with our protagonist Zero in a video store, asking for a video we ordered. It better be good. Instead, we are offered a foreign bootleg. It better be good. As you can see, the game lets you pick a variety of dialogue options. You can choose to go full dark side while the meter is still red, or you can choose to become a saint after the meter has gone red. From what we know on the internet, the second place for all your sources, there are multiple endings that ultimately depend on the choices you make. A good portion of the game doesn't necessarily affect the ending, most of them only come up really later on without much influence, but they're still an important factor in the narrative. I just decided to grab the bootleg and off we go. Does this happen when I buy videotapes? Thank god Blockbuster died. So, evil spirits have entered the city and we're supposed to get rid of them? How did we escalate so quickly? Here we are introduced to a tutorial, usual platformer stuff, but there are unique gameplay mechanics here that are really interesting. We have the wall jump from Ninja Gaiden, great, and this cursor acts as the direction of our attack. I play the game with the mouse and keyboard, so I don't know if it's the same for a controller or on your phone. Basically, with the cursor, we are granted more freedom of movement for our attacks instead of attacking via 4 or 8 directions only. Also, for all of our For Honor fans out there, I know I haven't played the game, you can parry which I forgot for maybe 75% of my playtime but hey, I didn't forget. We get a call from Grandfather Musashi, we can just reject the call but I'm an idiot. We gotta free a scientist from some evil spirits and we can actually slow down time which is a great feature to have in this type of game cause everything is quite fast paced, especially for newcomers. So here's the main gameplay, we have a set amount of time to clear out each area and to do so we have to kill every enemy there is. There is a stamina bar for our ability to slow down time and we can pick up and throw objects using our offhand against enemies and obstacles. Other than that, it's just a fast paced massacre with some incredible music. Also after completing each area you get this rewind function, apparently this is tied to some lore that I just learned but this allows you to rewatch your successful attempts at clearing an area. Shortly after there are lasers that you can only pass by rolling, great. The lasers are prominent obstacles that you'll encounter throughout most of the levels of the game but they're usually not that difficult to avoid or annoying at all. The best part about these lasers is that you can use them against a bunch of enemies depending on the situation. So we find the scientist who disappeared back home for some reason, we are ambushed by some evil spirits, i.e. three dudes with guns and the guy with a Skype tombstone haircut. 
We head to the murder hotel to meet up with a guy named Oda Nobunaga who has information about the remaining evil spirits. We have a little chat with the receptionist, she got mad as most women do when I have more urgent matters to deal with. I guess that's why most of the people who enter this room almost exactly looks like me. It's eerie. As we traverse the hotel, you can probably tell that this game requires you to be advantageous based on the environment, even if there are times when some areas in the game are tailored for the opponent's side. It's cool because you're forced to be strategic with how you make your moves. It's similar to Ghost Runner in a weird way, except in this game, you have much more control over each area because it's in 2D. So once we reach the top, we find Mr. Nobunaga, I, I tried okay. The moment I saw those words, I had to, you know? But he mentions someone named Dr. Edo, and that is our next clue. I thought we were going to a hospital. We first have to deal with evil wizard Subaru. Subaru? Saburo. And we have to stop evil wizard Saburo's music before any more harm is done. This is our first and probably only stealth level in this game. I said stealth. So this one is very simple, you just have to blend in with the crowd and for some reason I didn't even try to take the guards out one by one when they aren't looking. After dying to a turret, we get a call from circus man Yoshi. Where did he go wrong? Apparently Yoshi owns the place and tells us to stop the music. I am. This is a really cool level, now that the added stealth feature is here, it allows for much more variety in how to progress each level of the game. And I like this one level in particular because of the colors. We make our way to the evil wizard. He tells us that Dr. Edo tasked him to make the circus into a haven for evil spirits. Being the idiot I am, he escaped. We wipe out the remaining evil spirits and move on to our next mission. Being the guy with mass intellectual capabilities, we coincidentally happen to find the guy with a Skype tombstone haircut. Before we can get to him, we have to unlock three gates by going through each of the three levels available. First, we have the Chapel of Doom. I'm glad this was the first one I picked because you have a little mini card section that you can play with. This particular level is quite fun, probably the only time I had general fun in this game. For any game developer out there, add minecart sections like this. I don't care if it's a totally different game, just do it. Once we reach the end of the level, we head on to a space uncertainty. What makes this space-themed area different from any other space-themed area from other video games is that you can throw Molotovs. Not but a few moments later, we encounter a robot hacked by a man named Professor Hojo. We left just when he asked us if we remembered how to read. What do you think I'm doing? He committed arson, picked up a yellow bento, met the professor again, and went on to the next level, Quiet Hills. Like most Halloween attractions, it's this one's kinda boring. We picked up the last bento and... Oh right, get it cause it's Quiet Hills and space stuff. You know what? We opened the three gates, fought a bunch of evil spirits, and met the one blue man group. We fought him, failed mostly, the screen began to glitch, and we are defeated by Lady Sakura. She told us to leave and not interfere with our plans, but being the idiot I am, we kept on going. We tracked down Dr. Edo to a mansion, found the blue q-tip again, and started causing mayhem. This part of the game was really cool. To be honest though, every level in this game is cool because of the music and the adrenaline. This one in particular was awesome because if you take out the generator, the entire level just becomes a piece of cake. Not only was that cool, but something else happened. When you get to this part of the level and the rewind function happens, you can skip it and you get hijacked. It's quite similar to God of War Ragnarok where the game fakes her death. Moments like those are very useful in hooking players to the story or just the game itself. So we got captured, killed the guy who was about to torture us, and chased Optimus Prime ribs once again. Now this is my favorite part of the game just because it's cool and, and fairly easy. I played Turtles in Time and Shredder's Revenge and the parts where you ride around in the hub board were one of my favorite parts about those games. Seeing it here in a similar fashion gives this game more respect for me. But how can we make this even cooler? By adding a boss fight at the end of the level. The boss gave a fair amount of challenge and was overall a really fun fight. 
We caught Dr. Edo and suddenly a Pokemon rival came out of nowhere and killed the guy. So we apprehended the rival and another spirit hunter who claims to also be an evil spirit. They got away but we got one of their sex tapes. After rummaging through apartments, smashing drones, destroying an arcade, we got cornered by a bunch of bad guys but luckily we got help from Kai and Nasubi, spirit hunters who can stop time and somehow kill everyone in the vicinity. To further gain more info about the evil spirits, we take a look at the tape we got and... How the fuck is this guy so cool? Alright, so we play as this spirit hunter who can kill a bunch of enemies in a single dash. Other than that, it's a pretty cool level and I love that they just give this ability to you for only one level so you can't unlock this ability for the next remaining levels of the game although this was my own playthrough of the game so I can't confirm nor deny the possibility that you could get this ability later on which is cool. I'm totally not mad at all. Moving on. So we were sent by Professor Hojo to find clues in a meatpacking facility and as we made our way deeper, we were interrupted by a pedophile moist critical who couldn't stop talking about the facility. Moving forward, the meat man has a sniper on us meaning we have to constantly move around each level onwards to avoid getting hit. This doesn't really spike up the difficulty that much but it can be annoying sometimes. And would you look at that, the meat man has his own boss fight, sort of. For the first phase, we have to step into the green spotlights and avoid the pistons. Next, we have to beat a number of enemies within a very limited number of time. Afterwards, we avoided the sniper and dashed through some moving lasers and for some reason, I spent a lot of time trying to beat this particular phase. Other than that, it's just a bunch of rambling about meat and we destroyed the spirit machine. So we continued looking for clues while going full John Wick mode through a bunch of elevators and I spent an embarrassing amount of time again trying to go through a bunch of lasers. Seriously, what's wrong with me lasers? So after a bunch of explosions and stealth, we encountered the legendary weapon, a gun. It just works. After a bit more dilly dallying, we finally face the other spirit hunter who's also an evil spirit. This is a really cool boss fight. The moves are easy to grasp albeit a bit too fast to respond to and after each successful hit, a bunch of evil spirits show up and the bad guy can still throw rounds even when the evil spirits spawn in. For the second phase, it's a one on one. Before we fight, the spirit hunter tells us that we have been betrayed by Professor Hojo, who has always been an evil spirit. Now where have I seen this before? This next fight is pretty much the same albeit with a few new moves, but this fight was really fun honestly. It doesn't feel too gimmicky or unfair and I feel this was a pretty balanced boss fight all things considered. It's nice that you can replay boss fights after beating the game. I'm looking at you Mike Wazowski. So we intercept the traitor, Professor Hojo. The professor tells us that he did all of this for nuggets, what? He was the one behind the spirit machine, he's more powerful than 40 wizards and is conjuring a huge wizard spell, what? The city will never have another baseball game, what? So here we are at the final boss of the game. For the first phase, we, have, we just have to hit these giant hands while avoiding the attacks. It's a pretty simple first phase. For the second phase, we must parry the professor's balls back at his clones until all of these clones are down. Again, it's quite simple. For the next phase, I hope you guys aren't on LSD. So we just have to hit the eyeglasses all while suffering through Pride Month. This can be very disorienting for anyone who suffers from flashing lights and if you do and you really watch me review games, 
How the hell did you make it past Ghost Runner? Anyways, this is probably the most trippy boss fight I have ever had in any video game I've ever played. And I'm sorry if this is giving you brain damage. So for the final phase, the professor turns into a dragon. It was bound to happen eventually, especially in a ninja game. All we have to do is to hit the book three times, all while dodging in quick succession. This is a really great boss fight. The moves are also easy to grasp, albeit a bit harder to time than the last boss fight, and a lot of the attacks can happen at the same time, especially if you let those little dragon babies live and try to hunt you down. It's not easy by all means, but it was a pretty decent and fair boss fight. So after defeating the professor, everyone goes back to their normal lives, the professor's henchmen repay their debts, and we work in the meat packing facility, are you fucking kidding me? So that's Katana... Wait, Ka Katana Hero? Yeah, I think that's what I deserve for pirating too many games. Alright, here's the real deal. Katana Zero. Trust me, it gets better from here. So apparently I played the DLC version of the game first which is called Katana Hero. It's a retelling of the actual story of the game and it's supposed to act like those anime shows where they change the text of the dub to be more kid friendly and the like. It's honestly a really nice add-on for the game. It doesn't change much from the actual story save for the evil spirit stuff and it still feels like a Katana Zero game. How do I know that? I ran out of toilet paper. Enough of all that, let's get to the actual business. Katana Zero So the game opens with the same mission from the DLC, save the scientist and get him out of the facility. Immediately, there's a change of tone in the game by looking at the dialogue alone. This statement is further supported by Gore. At least this time you can pet the cat. Same level structure as before, nothing new, just more bloodshed around. So we free the scientist and his head got blown off, great. So we failed the mission and we returned to our apartment. Drank some herbal tea, listened to the news, got a dramatic nightmare, wait what? So the guy who was the main culprit behind the evil spirits and was actually a dragon in the DLC is our psychiatrist? I really wished I played this first. We talked a bit about the nightmares, got our medicine. Also, this guy sends us out on missions, similar to the previous one, to take out some bad guys. Our first target is Josh Rose. We entered the Murdauer Hotel, same as before, spoke with a nice lady receptionist once more, talked a bit about anime, and we moved on. We do our casual strolling throughout the hotel and found our way to Josh. He tells us that there is more than one of us. That's all the info we could get from him and he's surrounded. <laughs> What's he gonna do this time? Turn into a gargoyle and fly away? Before we left the hotel, the Pulis stopped us and we managed to go scot-free because of our anime charm. It just, it just works. works. Upon entering the apartment, we bumped into a little girl. She tells us that we're neighbors, alright Cole, I don't want to get into allegations right now. Drank some herbal tea, listened to the news. James Gunn was in the same nightmare this time, wait what? We returned to the psychiatrist, talked about the nightmare, got our medicine, and received our next mission. Our next target is the DJ. No fucking way I'm letting him live again, that traitor. We entered the same nightclub place, witnessed a tragedy, found DJ Electro Head. Because I let him escape last time, I'm not doing it again, so we kill him. We return to the apartment and find the little girl again. We helped her find her toy that somehow was in our apartment. We keep the other toy, drank some herbal tea, listened to the news. The guy who murdered James Gunn threw a little girl and that turned into a Leviathan toy. Wait, what? We returned to the psychiatrist, got our medicine, and received our next mission. Our next target is Fa Yuan, who is currently in prison. We got inside quietly and found that everyone was dead, including our target. The police intercepted us, we used the good old method of negotiation to get out, but we failed the mission. On our way back to the apartment, we encounter a war vet. We tried to convince him that we're also a war vet, but he let out a bunch of slurs so I killed him. We find the little girl again who got us a videotape. Knowing that we wear a bathrobe and a katana, this is most definitely the top secret season 3 of Jujutsu Kaisen, so we stopped the little girl from watching the video with us. Instead, it's just a bunch of hobos smoking crack. 
until Optimus Prime ribs ruined the fun and murdered them all. We fall asleep, the murderer in the nightmare activated the salon machine, wait what? The psychiatrist's office was closed so we roamed the streets until Blue Q-Tip dragged us into his limo. We learned that he's actually a big fan of ours and that he killed those two addicts in our apartment to get our attention. Since I'm a big watcher of all things Pixar and recently watched The Incredibles, I rejected this offer. We entered the studio where we were supposed to film some videos with Q-Tip, same procedure as usual, get the three key cards from the three levels, sign till reference, we find the guy, nearly defeated him once, but the keyboard just won't work, we got defeated as usual, Lady Sakura saved Q-Tip, they escaped, we returned to the apartment, drank some herbal tea, listened to the news, the little girl came trick or treating, we gave her a fish head, the consumable kind. Tragedy and comedy watched us sleep and spoke about us choosing either silver or gold. One of them was speaking in archaic English. It's not my fault for not understanding what they're saying. Next, we have a very weird dream. This is when we finally learn about our illness and our history. The drug is somehow important in keeping us alive, but it's also the reason we're suffocating. Without the drug, we would be stuck in a loophole for eternity. We got another vision where we are the war vet in the streets. Tragedy and comedy were there again. A split vision where we killed two kids and, and are once returned to reality. We received our medicine and our next mission. Our next target is Al Qasim. We head to the location, found Q-Tip, and made our way through the place John Wick style. We got sabotaged as usual, Q-Tip interrogated us and killed us, but here's the hunch. We've come to bargain. As we explore different dialogue options and keep dying over and over, we exploit Q-Tip by predicting the future. As we do, we learn that this guy's name is V, I probably said it during DLC earlier, but it's hard to remember names when it's a single level. We found Al Qasim, he died though, Vagina left, we kill our captors, we chase him through the highway, the real dragon shows up and takes the vagina, we went to a local bar, chatted with some war vets, and returned home drunk. The little girl entered our apartment because her dad's friends came over, we gave protein paste for breakfast, and headed off. We met the psychiatrist, he's big mad. We have a little talk with V about the consequences of our withdrawal. Holy shit, I got his name right. We returned to the psychiatrist and talked about the real dragon. He warned us about murdering a bunch of Pulis and sent us to find the real dragon. Before getting there, we gambled a bit. Having recently played Fallout New Vegas, I know just how to win these games. We killed a bunch of guards, cause we can. We got the tape from prison, we got cornered, tragedy and comedy show up, we chose the silver mask of death cause it sounds badass, we returned to the apartment, the little girl cleaned up the place, we went to a video store, watched a gory samurai movie, the little girl sleeps, on the floor, watched the prison tape, entered the most badass level in the game, and it is in this tape that we learned that the dragon killed Fa Yuan, and that a guy named Leon Vaughn, I can't pronounce that, made Kronos, which is the drug inside us. Before entering the psychiatrist's office, we got a call that Leon was inside the meat house. Great. We get there, played a fun little mini game, found Leon who died the moment he got out, we return to the apartment, the little girl brings us to a gorgeous view of the district, we had a wholesome talk, the good one. We wake up, the little girl makes us some terrible breakfast, we return to the mad psychiatrist, we tell him what we found from the meat house, the psychiatrist tells us that we had a normal life before Null, a military project focused on making super soldiers, and to do so requires Kronos, which is now a very scarce material soon to cease from existence, a drug that we have been sent all this time to destroy. We got our treatment and received the dossier for the final mission. We have been sent to eliminate any material found in Al Qasim's bunker. Before that, we encountered the nice lady receptionist once again. We talked a bit about anime once again, and we get the hardest decision in video games since The Walking Dead. I have to, or the next season of Jujutsu Kaisen gets leaked. We make our way through the lower levels, and as we approach the last elevator, a figure inside blew up and we got the same nightmare where the murderer activated the machine. 
Eventually, we find the dragon's accomplice, the same boss fight as before, then the accomplice tells us that there are no chronos in the bunker and if there were, it would be with the government. Even then, there wouldn't be enough for two, so we kill him. Or her. Found the mother with kids inside, began hallucinating, left the bunker, returned to the psychiatrist, killed him, injected a ton of drugs, returned to the apartment, the police were there, the little girl was a hallucination, we escape, we returned to the vision crystal clear, it was actually us that was the murderer in the nightmare. What the fuck?